Oh, sweet, I opened it. And I've got a time gauntlet. Now, what do we use it on? Ooh. Apple. Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learning you some filmmaking and learning good. And today, things are getting a little bit strange. Uh, thanks to these requests. As you can see, an absolute big bubble buttload of you have asked for some Doctor Strange effects for a long time. Now chances are you have seen our teaser and you have seen a little bit of the short that we had at the start of the episode, so you know that's what we're doing today. Now in order to complete this effect, you need to head down to filmlearning.com slash downloads and download our Doctor Strange effects pack, which contains our motion controlled Apple animation. It also contains two different Mandala animations, a Cinema 4D file that also contains our 3D time gauntlet, and of course some sound effects, because I'm a nice guy like that. And I know it goes without saying, but you also need to shoot your actor pretending to bend time and reverse that apple back and forth. Now guys, I would highly recommend grabbing either your phone or your tablet and putting that apple animation on there so you can time out that bend properly. Because essentially what I did is I had to actually slow down my footage to sync up with the apple animation. And you don't really want to do that. So that's my recommendation. Grab that Apple footage and put it on a video player and just play that and then just shoot yourself watching that and bending that time. It also does help if you have a little Ayabagamoto prop. I grabbed this one from Wish.com, it cost me about seven bucks. I'm sure you can get one off eBay or some costume shops, but it just sort of helps sell the effect because you've actually got a physical prop of the Ayabagamoto. Now we have a lot of steps to get through, so let's get to work. Okay guys, here we are in After Effects. I've got my footage of myself reversing the apple all ready to go. Well, apart from the fact that there's no apple, the shot is not moving, the eye of Akimoto isn't lit up, and there's no time gauntlet. So how is this ready to go? Hmm. So basically, we have a lot of work to do. Let's start with the easiest stuff and work our way up. Our first step is to add our mandala, or spell disk, whatever you want to call it. In the project file, you'll find two of them, all rendered out and ready to go. For this shot, we'll be using Mandela 1, but I'm getting ahead of myself. First, we have to track our hand. So to do that, I'm gonna use Mocha, since my hand is out of focus. Now in order to do that, we have to select our actor layer, then head to animation and click track with Mocha AE. Mocha will then start up and then we'll hit okay, because all those settings are fine. I generally just ignore this bit. Now we need to track our hand. So let's grab the x spline tool right up here, and then we're gonna draw a rough mask around our hand like so. We then have to select what we want it to track. I'm personally gonna turn off shear because when I move my hand into a fist, it does some funky stuff with the track. Now I do wanna track my rotation, but I don't wanna track my scale. Unfortunately, Mocha doesn't really let you do that, at least as far as I know. So we'll just include them in the track and I'll show you how to fix that when we get back into After Effects. Let's then hit the track forward button and let it do its magic. Once it's done tracking, we'll head down and export our tracking data by copying it into the clipboard like so. Let's then head back to After Effects, add a new null object right up here. From there, with our null object selected, we're just gonna hit Control V or Paste, and there's our tracking data stuck right on that hand. Cool, huh? Now before we bring in our mandala, let's fix that scale issue that we had with Mocha. It's pretty easy, actually. All we need to do is hit S underneath our null object and just click the stopwatch to remove the scale animation. Done, now let's move on. We can now drag and drop Mandela 1 into the comp, change the transfer mode to add, make it 3D by checking this box, and then we're gonna parent it to a null object like so. Next, let's animate the rotation in 3D slightly, just so we can sell the perspective of that being stuck to our hand. So let's hit R to open up the rotation controls and let's adjust it slightly to make it seem like it's lining directly up with our hand right here. Much better. Now, any axis that you adjusted here guys, hit the stopwatch on. We'll then scrub ahead and at any time you want to adjust this again, stop, make your adjustments and then just skip along to the next part and keep going till you're near the end around here where I'm about to rotate my hand down. It's at this point we need to rotate the mandala up like in the movie. 
So make sure you add keyframes to any axis you wanna move at this point. And then we'll move forward to the end of the comp and make our rotation adjustments. Now I'm not gonna go as crazy as the movie scene, but I just wanna rotate it enough that it's noticeable because my hand movement isn't exactly the same as the movie. There. Now if we preview that, it's looking pretty good. Now we gotta blend it. Firstly, let's add a glow. Let's then bump the radius up to 102. That's it. Next, let's head to Blur and Sharpen and add a fast box blur. And we'll give it a radius of say, four. That just punches up our glow just a tad more. And finally, let's head back up to Blur and Sharpen once more and add a camera lens blur. And let's crank that up to eight. That's one layer down. We're now gonna duplicate that layer. Let's select the top layer and delete that fast blur like so. And then we're gonna increase the camera blur to 12. Done. That's the easy part done, believe it or not. Now, before we move on, we have to do one thing. We need to render out a Photoshop sequence of our current shot. To do this, head up to Composition, click Add to Render Queue, and then we're gonna click on the lossless settings, and from the drop-down menu right here, we're gonna select Photoshop Sequence. We'll then hit OK, and then over here, we're gonna designate a save location, like so, and hit that Render button. So, why did we do that? Well, I'll explain it in a second. Our next step is to jump into one of the harder parts of this effect, the Time Gauntlet. For this, you'll need to import the Cinema 4D file marked Doctor Strange Bracelet. From there, we need to open up Cinema 4D to animate the gauntlet to your arm movements. To do this, select the Cinema 4D file, head to Edit, and then click Edit Original. This will open up the file in Cinema 4D ready to edit. Now for all you guys that don't have Cinema 4D Lite or you don't have Cinema 4D, I've rendered out an alpha channel pass of my own arm animation that you can use, but just be aware that it might not work that well considering it's mapped to my individual arm movement. But I thought I'd give it to you just the same, as I'm really not in the business of having anyone miss out. Anyway, now that we're in Cinema 4D, you can see we have this black cylinder and a couple of green stringy things. If we hit the render button, you can see that they are actually the time gauntlet. Now the reason we have a black cylinder in the middle of our gauntlet is to simulate an arm being there and obscuring the other side of the time gauntlet. Because if we don't have it there, we'll be able to see the entire gauntlet in 3D. And considering it's going around the arm, that wouldn't make any sense as the arm actually obscures the rest of the gauntlet. So let's jump into the animation process right now. As you can see, we have a background layer up here that is turned off. So let's double click on each of these dots to turn it back on. And from there, we'll head down to the material menu and click on the material marked background material. Now in the color menu is where our Photoshop sequence will come into play. Let's load a new image by clicking here and then load the very first frame of our Photoshop sequence. And there we go. From there, we'll dive into the picture settings and head to animation. From there, we need to hit this calculate button. That's gonna load all the frames from our sequence. And once we close out our material, we can now hit the play button and see our shot animating in the background like so for reference. And this is how we'll match our arm movement with the time gauntlet model. So let's grab our cylinder model, make sure we're on the first frame and using the position and rotation controls, we're gonna match it up with our arm placement as best we can. Okay, when you're happy, we're gonna add an animation keyframe by hitting this button right here. You can now see we have a keyframe right down on the timeline. Let's then skip along around 10 to 15 frames and then we're gonna reposition the cylinder like so. Once again, when you're happy with the placement, add another keyframe. You can then repeat this process again and again and again until you've reached the end of the shot. You should have something that looks like this by the end of it. Now, if you find that the animation isn't quite following your arm in those in-between frames, just add some extra keyframes in between. Once you're done, we need to turn that background layer back off again. There we go. And then we can go up and hit save. Or if you have Cinema 4D standalone, render this bad boy out and let's head back to After Effects. Now once we're back in After Effects, all you using Cinema 4D Lite need to render that model animation out. Otherwise your comp will take forever to preview. So let's grab that Cinema 4D file, drop it into a new comp and render it out. Just render it out as any video file. I'm gonna select QuickTime. Done. 
Then we just need to import it back in as a video file. Let's then drag and drop that into our comp and change the transfer mode to screen. We'll then follow that up by duplicating it and with the bottom layer selected and the top layer turned off, we're going to head to blur and sharpen and add a camera lens blur. Now I'm gonna bump this up to eight just so the blur matches me in the shot. Next, I think that green is a little bright and desaturated. So let's head to effect, color correction and add a hue and saturation. And I think I'm going to bump the master saturation up to 61. And then I'm gonna bust that lightness down, say minus 50. That looks much better. Now let's finish that off by turning back on our top gauntlet, heading to effect, blur and sharpen and add fast box blur. And I'm just gonna increase that to say 33 and that gives our gauntlet a little glow. Nice. Now you may notice that we have a problem. Sure that cylinder did obscure the wrist, but what about the hand? Well, that's an easy fix actually, just takes a little bit of time. Let's head down, grab our actor footage, duplicate it and drag it above everything except our mandala. We'll then turn them off to get a better view of what we're doing, just for now. From there, let's grab the pen tool and draw a mask around our hand and let's feather it out a little bit. There. Next, hit M on the keyboard, hit the stopwatch on mask path, and then we're just gonna go scrubbing through the timeline and adjust this mask to our hand movements. Now you may also find that as you're scrubbing through the timeline adjusting this mask, you will have to adjust the mask shape as well. And that's mainly because the perspective of your hand changes, so the shape of your hand will change. But the end result should look like this. It's getting there. Now turn those mandalas back on and BAM! Even better again. Okay, moving on to our next step, the Apple. Now first things first, we need to open up a brand new full HD comp. And we'll call this one Final. And all we're gonna do is head to the project menu and drag our current comp into this new full HD comp. And from there, we're just gonna scale it down so we've got a bit of room to move on either side. That looks pretty good. Let's head over to the project window, grab our Apple final file and drop that into the comp on top of everything. And if you haven't imported it, import it and then drop it in the comp just like me. Then of course, I'm gonna position it where I want it in the shot. Now guys, just be aware that you don't really wanna move this thing from left to right because it's already where it needs to be in the shot. And of course, it's animated moving left to right. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now we just have to blend the Apple into the scene a little better. For that, I'm firstly gonna head over to presets right here and type choker. I'll then grab matte choker and drop that on our apple. From there, I'm just gonna increase the gray level softness to 64%. And if I turn that on and off, you can see it just softens the edge around our apple, just so it's not that harsh. Next, let's head to effect, color correction and grab brightness and contrast. Now, I'm just gonna bump down the brightness, say minus 36 and bust that contrast down to minus 44 as I shot mine in a flat color profile and it's a lot more dimly lit. So it's a stark contrast to where I shot the apple, which was brightly lit and on a green screen. So you've got to match those two shots as best you can. So just make sure and have a play. And who knows, you might not have to adjust the color at all. Okay, we've blended our apple. There's just one issue. Our apple is moving, but our shot isn't. And that's where this very handy animation guide over here called Tracker comes into play. If you drag and drop that onto your scene, like so, we now have a tracking marker on screen that matches the exact movement of our apple. So let's head up, grab a new null object, and with our tracker layer selected, let's head over to our tracker controls and select track motion. And finally, let's select a nice juicy part of that marker. Right here is good. Let's then hit edit target and select our null object. Done. And then we'll hit the play button. Once it's done and you're happy with the track, Hit apply and okay. Now let's parent our actor footage to the null. It's not bad, but my actor isn't exactly where I want them in the shot. Hit P and move the position over a little bit, like so. Now guys, I'm working with 4K footage here, so you can see I have a decent amount of room to move outside of the comp space. But if you shot full HD, you may have to scale up your footage to avoid any borders peeking out the sides. 
Okay, I'm happy with the position change, so let's check out a preview. Not bad, but it is missing something. Now, if you said, wait, there's no shadow under that apple, give yourself a damn good pat on the back, because you're right. So let's build a very quick and easy shadow. Firstly, let's duplicate the apple and turn off the effects. Done. From there, let's make the apple 3D by hitting this box. Then we're gonna hit R and let's rotate it around to the point where it's facing down and away from our original apple footage. That looks pretty good. Next, let's head to effect, perspective and add drop shadow and check the box that says shadow only. I'm then gonna increase the softness to around 500%. I'll then increase the opacity to 100%. And finally, I'm gonna change the shadow color to a darker gray color to better suit our scene. This gives us a nice soft, fat shadow, but we ain't done yet. Let's duplicate that shadow layer, done. And then we're gonna turn the softness to around 250%. And just for good measure, let's make that shadow color a little darker. Nice, if we check out a preview now, we now have a shadow under our apple and it's looking pretty good. Now our last step, and I know this one's been a long one guys, is lighting up our Eye of Akimoto. Now I used optical flares from Video Copilot with a custom flare, but you can use any flare plugin you like guys. Just make it nice and simple and just green. Now I just thought we'd finish with something easy. If you can see in my shot, the necklace is blocked by my arm for a little bit here, and then you can start to see it. So what I've done here is create a flare that starts very small on that first frame where it just sort of peeks through. And then it gets a little bit bigger on the reveal. I've animated the XY position to stick to the necklace frame by frame. Now, since this isn't a very long shot, it wasn't very hard frame by frame animation. So I figured I could just show the process and you guys could just follow along. Now, for those of you without optical flares or a flare plugin, I have added a flare still in the download pack. And all you're really gonna have to do here is just animate the position of that flare to stick to your necklace. Now, the reason I'm not going through this part in the usual step-by-step -step detailed stuff is mainly because I don't know how many of you actually have this necklace prop to do it. And this is already a pretty damn long tutorial and I have covered animating flares multiple times on film learning. So if you do have optical flares, I'll add the flare comp into the project folder as well. Now, in the movie, the necklace does cast a volumetric light out. And that's also an easy thing to do. So let's duplicate that flare, like so. And then with the bottom layer selected, we'll head to effect, blur and sharpen and add CC radial fast blur. We'll then set that blur amount to 96. And then we're gonna adjust the center point so that the light casts out over our apple. And there we are. And then we'll hit the stopwatch. We can then move forward on the timeline and adjust that center point as the camera moves, like so. Done. And finally guys, if we check out our preview, that is our Doctor Strange Apple effect. <clears throat> Done, that feels so good. Add up all those steps and you get something that looks like this. So guys, that's my take on the Doctor Strange Apple effect. I know it's a lot of steps, but it does look really cool and it's about as screen accurate as you're going to get. Now with the mandalas, I just want to quickly shout out the guys at premiumbeat.com. I actually used their mandala animation as a base for my own and I just modified it so it looked a bit more screen accurate. So well done guys, your tutorial was pretty damn cool. Now guys, if there are any more Doctor Strange effects that you'd like me to cover, throw them down in those comments or hit me up on Twitter or the Facebook page. Now I am planning on tackling some stuff from Stranger Things and maybe something from Star Wars The Last Jedi. If you haven't seen it, go see it now, it's freaking awesome. So stay tuned for that. But for now guys, that is my time. If you did enjoy this video and you do enjoy some Doctor Strange effects that look pretty damn cool, please smash that like button. I really appreciate it guys. And if you're not subscribed here, hit that subscribe button. And if you are subscribed, please turn those notifications on so you don't miss a single episode. We're on our way to 80,000 subscribers. I hope to hit that before the end of the year. So I guess we'll just see if that happens. I've got two other film limited episodes right over here, as well as our Star Wars FX playlist that's right here. My social media stuff is above my head, Twitter, Facebook, all that sort of stuff. And until I see you again, guys, may the force be with you and keep learning.